Welcome to Trading Nation. I'm Eric Chemi. The holiday rush may get sidetracked. Our next guest believes new economic lockdowns will start weighing on consumers. Jim Bianco is president of Bianco Research. Jim, welcome to the show. Uh, thanks for having me. So we're seeing more lockdowns popping up all over the place, just in the real economy. You see sports stadiums that used to have fans now saying, hey, those fans can't come in. So what kind of impact do you expect these new virus lockdowns? How is that going to affect consumer spending? Oh, it's going to hurt it. There's no doubt. <clears throat> it's going to lead to people's going out less, spending less, staying more at home as well. Yeah, we'll stay at home and we'll stream videos and stuff, but we were doing that anyway. It's going to lead to less economic activity, not more. What do you think about this current failure to pass, uh, you know, an additional stimulus package? Do you think that affects consumers? But when you look at a lot of the data, they do have a lot of savings right now across the country. Yes, they do. And the reason that they've been reluctant to spend it is because they've been so uncertain about the outlook. The new virus count and the lockdowns is going to just hold them back from doing it. Maybe another stimulus package would give them a little bit more incentive to spend. But right now, we've been waiting for that next stimulus package since August 1st. And it doesn't look like we're going to get anything probably until after January 20th at the earliest. What do you tell advisors, clients, friends, people that you're working with in terms of this waiting for a package? Do you just say, hey, don't bank on it? Do you say, like you just said, maybe it comes after January? When you're looking at trying to set up a portfolio, do you give some percentage that maybe this happens? Or you just say, forget it, assume it's not there? Um, that's a complicated question because I would say that you're probably going to be disappointed by the package and you're going to see the economy probably struggle a little bit more shorter term. Now, longer term, when structuring a portfolio, everybody's looking at the vaccine announcements and saying, okay, yes, you're right. Shorter term, we're going to have a problem, but who cares? The second half of 21 is where we're living. We see vaccines. We see everybody getting a jab in the arm. We see things returning to normal. And that's where they're basically focusing their attention on. In that case, I've warned them, be careful, because you're also buying a stock market that is pretty high in valuation. There's nothing cheap about this market. And history shows us if you buy an expensive market, hoping it will get more expensive, you're more apt to be disappointed than rewarded under that scenario. And when we're talking about consumer spending, that consumer mentality, how much gap do you, or how much do you see that gap widening? We know the haves and have nots, a lot of the haves, they can work from home, they can work remotely, they can get paid exactly the same as they were getting paid before. In a different situation, if you have a certain kind of job, you're running the risk of a salary cut, you're running the risk of your job going away, and guess what, you still have to show up in person. How do you see the second phase of lockdowns affecting that? You know, it's gonna widen it, no doubt. Roughly around 30% of the jobs in the American workforce can be effectively done at home. 70% of them can't. Think surgeon to waitress. They can't do that at home uh, as well. So the people that can effectively work at home are at the higher end of the spectrum. And so they will benefit or they won't be hurt as much by another work from home wave coming as much as people that are required to show up at a specific establishment to do their job would. So you'll just see the, uh, the wealth gap or the inequality gap probably worsen especially without any kind of fiscal stimulus from the federal government. We've had some charts up as you're talking on employment rates, jobless claims, some of these overall economic uh, numbers out there. What is your thought on the overall state of the economic recovery right now? Because obviously these numbers, if we, if we knew we were going to have these kind of numbers a year ago and you didn't see the path of how we got there, people would be blown away with unemployment rates, jobless claims at these levels. So it's hard to even figure out is this a good recovery or a bad recovery? I think you're exactly right. The, the, the pandemic shutdown and recovery is unlike anything we've seen. So there's no historical precedence to say this is the way it should go. But beyond that, we had a V bottom in the spring and the economy really took off in the third quarter. But now it looks like it's starting to stall. Retail sales number this week was not good. The initial claims number was worse than expected. Not saying the economy is contracting, but we're in a mode where we're trying to recover lost jobs, we recover lost economic activity. That pace is slowing. It's going to take even longer for us to do it. One estimate is 
10 million people still have not gotten their jobs back that they lost during the pandemic, which is still more jobs than were lost during the Great Recession in 2008 and 9. And by the end of 2021, there will still be 5 million people that have not gotten their jobs back because of the pandemic. It's going to take a long time, and the slowing is just stretching that out. 20 years ago, it was 2000. We were talking about that bubble peak. That was a whole different situation there, right? It was before 9-11. There was no pandemic. We were just finishing the 1990s decade, right? So a very different world. Bill Clinton was still in office. Do you see any similarities right now in the S&P 500 to what was going on then? Because I think most people would say very different environment. It is a different environment, but the valuations are similar. Uh, back in 2000, the overall S&P peaked at about a forward P.E. Forward P.E., the estimate of earnings in the next year, about 25 times what the price is. We're roughly at the same level right now. The problem is history shows us if you're going to buy a stock market with a 25 P.E. over the next several years, 10 years or so, your returns are very low single digits, maybe 3 percent, 2 percent per annum, that you shouldn't be expecting over the long term big booming gains like you would be if you were buying a market that was down around 12 or 13 on a forward P.E. ratio, which is where it was back in April. But most of those gains have already been occurred. So you're buying a very expensive market. As we found in 1999, it took the NASDAQ 12 years to recover. It took the S&P about seven years to recover. And so uh, th th this could be a long, strong up process. Not that the market will go down, it's just that it will really struggle to make big gains from here unless something comes along that really adds to earnings. And most of the forward PE earnings right now, they already assume that a vaccine is coming in the second half of 21. So that can't be it, it's gotta be something else. All right, you paint a, a very uh, complex picture, Jim, I'll put it that way. So those big booming gains, everybody wants them. We've already had them the last few months, maybe not as easy to come in the next few months or few years going forward. Jim Bianco, thank you for joining me here on the show today. Thank you. That was Jim Bianco, of course, great guest as always. Thank you for watching Trading Nation. I'm Eric Chemi. We'll see you next time.